back with yet another episode of Issues Pani Nyaya, where we continue to challenge the status quo by raising awareness in an effort to influence change. My name is Rimba Zaimenge, and I'm riding solo today, broadcasting to you live on Capital 100.4 FM, Harare's Heartbeat, as well as Star FM, sounding good all the time. We are also live on our Facebook page, that's Capital at Capital FM, and on the Issues Pani Nyaya page at Issues Pani Nyaya on Facebook and on Twitter. We invite you to be part of all conversations this evening on our WhatsApp number. That's 0773 9100095. We also invite you to participate through the telephone as you can phone in live into studio on 0719 The 21st century boy child has it hard. Uh, unlike or just like the 20th uh, first century girl, Ama 2000. What do we do so that we pay more attention to his needs? Where do we begin? We need to ca- carry on with the conversation that we started last Wednesday on the neglected boy child. empowerment. It's only the girls, the girls, the girls, the girls. Totangira papi, vobatsika sei, vanokoma na vedu pani nyaya. And to unpack tonight's conversations, I am very happy to be joined, as always, by an esteemed panel of guests. I'm joined uh, in the studio uh, by uh, Tony Friday. Good evening, Tony. Evening, uh, how are you? Fantastic. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you so much. I can feel yes, it in yes. your voice. We're also joined by Tadzi Madzima Tadzi. Good evening and welcome. Evening, how's it going? It's going great. Thanks so much for joining us. And joining us uh, over the phone is uh, Tino Tenda Gutima. Tino, good evening, and thanks so much for being part of the issues discussion this evening. Good evening. Um, thank you for having me. Um, I look forward to being enlightened through this conversation. Fantastic. Uh, so I think all systems are go. Um, okay, we need to start this conversation uh, perhaps by looking at what men and boys represent in society. Are men representing or appealing for support for the boy child uh, where they felt neglected themselves? Who are the advocates? Uh, you know, because for female activists, it's a lot of women who've suffered disproportionate discrimination. Because of one or two reasons. We say, you know what, I want to start an organization that will help us kind of get through these things. Is the same happening for men? Tony, I'm looking at you. Tell us, is this how it happens? Where is the missing link? So um, just do a quick search here yeah? and uh, just uh, go on Google and uh, search for organizations that are advocating for men and the, bo- uh, and the boy child. You will not find many. Uh, but if you search for organizations that are, you know, dealing with, uh, you know, the girl child and women's issues, you will find plenty. We, we even used to joke about it, you know, in the mental health circles that, you know, if, you, if you're looking for men, you know for funding you know uh, as an organization you know just uh, start advocating for girls and you know women you know the mom the money comes out like really fast but it's not so uh with um i i, I think because over the years um there's been so much emphasis and focus on you know uh women and girls uh you know as disadvantaged you know members of society uh, to the detriment of, you know, the boy child. There hasn't been as much focus. There's not as many programs that are being offered for, uh, you know, for um, maybe partially because we don't know how to deal with those issues uh, because of our history. Um, when it comes to men, people don't know what to do with us, you know, but when it comes to women, you know, uh, there's all kinds of information available for uh, for, 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 for you guys, you know, to get help. Like just now, if you, uh, go on Google again, if you're looking for a helpline for girls and women, there's like plenty, but you will not find as many, maybe because people don't know what to do with us because we are a misunderstood, you know, uh, section of society, uh, men and boys. We, we don't have as many voices, uh, when it comes to our issues. Um, and I'll speak for the one area that I'm very passionate about the area of mental health, you know. Um, men are not allowed to deal with issues. They don't have the permission to deal with their stuff. Uh, Allowed by who? By society. Society being you and me. 
the society is not an animal out there it's you and me so you and me don't allow men and boys to you know uh to come out and say you know what i i i'm, I'm looking for help i need uh direction on this issue because we are so domesticated to bottle things up we 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 don't have the permission to come out and say you know what uh i need help with this i need help with that because of the 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 pedestal that you guys have created when you say you guys you know this is really hard for me to to to, to listen to because we exist in a patriarchal society we have been women when i say we i mean women have been bending and breaking at the will of men since time immemorial you are the men in positions you are the men with power why don't you take some time uh, and use the money that you have to form an organization for boy children women are doing it with the little resources that they have it's not little resources it's a lot of resources Let's men be have more resources when you no, look at the don't. scale of economic power and and so on it would be good to 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 see what the stats look like mm. i mean without starting a debate absolutely on this topic okay. it would be good to actually see what the stats look like like women in leadership and men in leadership there are in more this day. men in leadership i'll tell you that off the back of my i can tell you that at my fingertips yeah but that may not necessarily translate to um the availability of resources for you know for the kind of thing that we want to talk about today mm. um uh, we really have been neglected even uh, by men as well even by men as well okay because like i said people don't know what to do with us okay T Tati, i want you to come in do you share that view uh partially not not entirely okay um i believe that it's been sink uh, women have when it comes to issues around women's rights and women empowerment the reason why it seems like a lot of resources and a lot is going towards this is because it was centuries and centuries of women dealing with um, oppression for a very long time. Women were expected to be at home for a very long time, um, not work, not be breadwinners, be homemakers. This was this this took centuries uh, for it to be addressed, and unfortunately the issues around women empowerment we still have a very long way to go we cannot say that we have covered these issues statistically um it is actually showing that there is still a lot of oppression that women face globally we're not just talking about you know because we live in a pretty comfortable society in 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 in, in one way or the other way you know this is a peaceful society there there are countries where there's wars happening women are being raped they're being abused they are being uh, taken advantage of these are some of the com these are some of the countries we're talking about we're talking about places like where women are not even allowed to express themselves or talk their societies where this is happening in this day and age so if we look at the issues around women with blinkers and we think okay let's look at our society and think okay women are free women are getting opportunities it's not the same in every place in many places this is not what it looks like and even if we look if we look at just the urban society the the urban society is not a complete representation of what girl empowerment looks like in this country let's look at the rural communities and that will really show you where girls stand right because we come to the urban communities and we see these young women who can dress however they want they say how whatever they want they go to university and they are they are outspoken but is that the case in the rural communities and we all know that the majority of the country is living in the rural, rural areas so what is the state of the girl child in the rural communities is it that same situation where they are free to do whatever they want they have they they've got their voice is that what we are seeing in the rural communities right now because what we are hearing right now for example we just recently heard of a girl that died giving birth at um at some religious institution right and she was left there with a with that with with, with in that state we're hearing of a nine-year-old who's pregnant we're hearing of in religious Bulawayo, institutions yeah. yes yeah. so this is the state of the of the girl child we, we cannot look at, at at women through the lens of the urban society and not look at women through the lens of the rural communities which is the majority of where the population of the country resides and if we look at that majority right now those girls are really they are not getting the same opportunities. If if we're we're looking at circumstances where girls in those communities are not get if if there's no money, the family will choose the boy to go to school and the girl will be told to stay at home. 
or the or the family will decide that the girl must get married so that she can so that they can cover expenses so we still have a lot of issues where child marriages are taking place early pregnant teenage pregnancies are taking place because girls are put in situations where they are expected to they're not really seen as valuable in society Mm -hmm. um tino i want you to come in um and you know this aspect of the forerunners of men and boys issues should be men and boys uh and the reason why there's a bit of silence on that tony says is because you know society does not know what to do with men and boys um what's your take um yeah i i, I agree with um tony and i also agree with um Tazi, uh with what she was saying but i think <clears throat> for starters, um, with the way the, the, the conversation was already going, one of the biggest issues is that uh, we end up speaking more about what women are going through, what the girl child is going through, and then we sort of digress. Because I've seen it in a lot of conversations that, um, because look, we can't hide from the fact that historically women have been marginalized and, and, and they have been the center of these discussions around neglect and all that. But, Look, most of the time when we have these conversations around the boy child or around men, we end up digressing and then speaking more about what women are going through and all that. And I think that's one of the, the, the biggest challenges. I think um, it's about zeroing in and focusing on what the boy child is actually going through. You know, because um, there are a lot of issues that we can pinpoint and pick out, but without then... Um, including the conversation around what the girl child is, is, is going through. I'm not saying let's not speak about it, but I'm saying it's time to focus on that particular conversation so that we can come up with, with answers and come up with, uh, with solutions. Because, look, there are so many issues going around. Um, the same way we can speak about um, the girl child um, suffering uh, from sexual abuse, etc., we can now really have so many conversations around that because in the press there's so many issues um, coming up about the boy child being um, sexually abused and all that. But because, like Tony said, because we are misunderstood, we can't really start um, having these, these conversations because there's so much we need to discuss as men first because we need to understand ourselves. I know Tony mentioned earlier on that um, society and, and, and people around us are... are um, I'm not um, asking the right questions, but even us ourselves, even me as an individual, as a man, I haven't asked myself some of the right questions because it's difficult. I don't allow myself to ask some of these questions because, look, we've been taught not to be vulnerable. So it's about teaching us to be vulnerable first so that we can actually speak um, in these different um, places without then having to speak about what the girl child is going through, what the woman is going through. Yes, a lot still needs to be done for the woman, but if we keep focusing but, but needle on back on okay no i i hear you okay so let's bring the needle back on the page and talk about specific issues that are affecting the boy child take us through some of those i mean the, 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 <laughs> I, I want to avoid equating uh all boy child issues to girl child issues um but w will you at least uh get into the fact that they are different is it correct to say that they are uh, some to some extent differences between the needs of the boy child and the girl child yes uh, to, to 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 a certain extent they are but um unfortunately well because we're thinking uh, we're speaking of children a lot of the issues are a bit similar but the thing is when we speak about certain issues like um sexual abuse um and the like sometimes it's as if it's taboo to say a boy has been sexually abused i don't know why uh, society treats it like that but that's the truth and i think in one of the conversations we did discuss that look if a boy child has been um sexually abused by a mate, uh, we shouldn't see it as something to be proud of. But let's call it what it is. It's a disgusting act. So let's call it what it is and start from there. So I think it's also about um, defining um, that some of these things, um, when we look at them at a lens, let's not look at them specifically um, and say, look, this is um, a girl that this happened to, so it's, it's a crime because it happened to a girl and not to a boy. But so now we need to not necessarily separate but yes we need to discuss these things as they are before we we then uh, make them seem like they're specific to a particular gender but i think um, like going back to what tony said i think one of the, the the biggest challenges that we face that we need to deal with is that of being able to allow the 
which how to be vulnerable or to allow ourselves to be vulnerable so like you you your question uh, was asking first off like um um a man appealing you know for the support of the boy child i think right now it is it, it's difficult to say yes because men are actually trying to understand themselves we are questioning a lot of ourselves because look there's a battle uh, against uh, patriarchy patriarchy has been what we grew, what we grew up under it's what we know so now we are trying to understand it through the lens of look a lot of it was wrong so because we are trying to understand that and trying to deal with it as men it's become difficult as well to then pass it on to 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 the little ones growing up but i think we're getting there because we're beginning to understand you know there's different platforms we are now starting to discuss what it is to 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 be going through certain things as a, as 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 a as a male individual and because of that we're now able to pass down these things to 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 the younger generation you know like uh, we're saying women's issues it's been a while uh, that we've been talking about them and and it, it was a process and i think we're getting there we're in the first stages we're in the beginning stages but we will actually get there I'm um, Tony I want to come to you you talked about uh, one of the barriers to uh access for for men and boys is the uh I think it's two pronged first that maybe there's not an enabling space for mm-hmm. men and boys to share and to feel open yeah. or maybe that society does not permit them to do so as you rightfully said it's society tikuomesera vana komana nevarume to but ati murume chai hada iso mkomana akachema zonza wasachema shumba musacheme amdaro you know the, those sorts of things and things that are being integrated into children very young yes. how can we start to turn the tide and perhaps start to create these spaces encourage more pockets in society that actually say you know but a real man speaks up a boy must must talk a boy can be harmed yep. just as much as a girl um everything begins with awareness say eh? like if there's an awareness of an issue uh, we can begin to you know come up with solutions for it um there's a reason why statistically men commit more suicides than women you know uh the reason the major reason why men are more vulnerable to suicide than women is because you guys have all kinds of spaces to get help and to speak about stuff right it hasn't been the same for us uh, over 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 you know you know throughout history um if we can begin by creating spaces and spreading the awareness um and also just teaching our kids that it's okay to be vulnerable to teach them emotional uh vulnerability uh to in fact i i i'm 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 advocating for mental health to be available in schools the same way that you have physical education available in schools because um there is no way we cannot afford any more not to teach it in schools because you have to know how to process emotions as a boy uh, typical example i grew up in a very traditional home uh, in a very patriarchal home you know uh, where wairo wa hunzuru chema you understand like ukapa ku road wa maro vane koko and then was shika ongo singato shika kuna mtara uchiti ndaro ku road you know that's what a man does go right? back but they were only teaching us what they know but now we know better and we cannot continue to perpetuate the same kind of you know uh uh and helpful you know practices you know on our kids uh i'm trying to do differently with my kids uh you know just to let them know that you know what it's okay to feel it's okay to because we heal by feeling right so when you allow yourself to feel uh you 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 are open to happiness and pain uh equally because it's all part of being human you know i don't know who sold us the lie that you know we're supposed to be happy all the time no that's not practical perpetual happiness is not a practical thing so if we instill this in our young boys and paint a different picture of what a man is supposed to look like you understand uh, a real man is emotionally vulnerable a real man is compassionate I, i would you believe this i don't remember one time when my father said to me i love you 
I, I growing can, up. I, I can't believe that because yeah. I think it's a generational thing. Exactly. Um, you look at Amma 2000 now, or like you know the the, the Gen Zs of the, the my, my, mm. th- they get kissed by their fathers, yeah. they cry, they do all sorts of things. Then they're allowed to do that. Yeah. Yeah. But but I I never experienced that. So now I'm doing differently with my babies. You understand? So my babies here, I love you every single day. It's something that I have never, that I never experienced growing up, but I understand that it's important uh, because I now know better. So creating spaces for, for, for men to, um, to, to, to seek help. And also more importantly, and this is a big one because this even affects, you know, women, like just to get rid of the stigma around seeking help and admitting that you are not okay that is a big thing you know with hiv um back in the 80s when hiv hit this part of the world you know there was there was you know going out to get tested was taboo because and people would die in their homes because nobody wanted to go through the 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 stigma and the shame that was attached to uh you know hiv and aids back in the day because we didn't know better but now we know better it's now a normal conversation almost uh you know you can tell someone you're hiv positive without even blinking you understand but all of that happened through a lot of education and awareness um and uh, like what he said you know uh, is we're not saying let's not have conversations about women and girls issues but i'm just saying that we must put equal emphasis uh on the boy because we will end up with the very unequal uh you know society you have empowered the woman and you have not empowered uh you know the little boy child you have not taught him how to deal with the empowered woman so what happens then that question has actually been asked so, you know, who are we empowering these girls for for disempowered boys but um Tazi, i want to come to you i mean okay it's often said um i like what tony had to say that a certain age of fathers i love you but you would know uh, or you know you'd never see your parents you know ex- expressing any any intimacy nope. but kissing, oh, no, but no, no. you have six and six seven <laughs> eight nine little brothers and sisters uh, i'll leave that there <laughs> is is it the responsibility of the mother in the role or you know in the home to play an emotional role in the upbringing of the boy child uh is it all for the mother to do because a lot of what tony and tino are saying and even our listeners i'll get to some of the messages it it seems like there are things that should be taught by the mother and the mother is the one rearing and nurturing and teaching these things um by putting the responsibility on on mothers on women uh, do you does this mean that fathers are neglecting their role in ensuring that their sons are emotionally stable who should be responsible for the emotional molding of a boy uh, as he is growing all right so i think that responsibility is on both parents because um i think there is value that a boy can gain from experiencing love from his mother and his father And I think that one of the main reasons why we find that in society uh, boys might find it very difficult to express their emotions is not only because the fathers are telling them that they cannot express their emotions, but the mothers also sometimes are telling them that you're not supposed to cry, you're supposed to man up. So you find that um, the responsibility of the rearing of a child is on both parents. It's a mother has has to also be okay with her, her son crying with that softness, you know, is also needed from the mother's side. But there's an expectation that comes on to a boy uh, where it comes that you're supposed to be the head of the house. You're the one who's going to take care of us. So even mothers will put pressure on their sons as they are growing up that they should at some point start taking care of the bills at the, in the house. They should start uh, catering for those costs. So we we have a lack of... So this is not just an issue about mothers but fathers so i will look at fathers now and i would say that fathers play a role in being role models right so we're looking at do we have good role models for young men in society where they can look up to whom they can look up to and say this these men know how to express their emotions they know how to share what's going on internally and and so forth have we do we have those role models in the father because a young boy is going to look up to his dad right because that's his role model right so he's going to look at how his dad reacts to things how his dad treats his mother how his dad's dad shows his emotions and also so that is important for us to look at like what 
such role models do we have? Are men stepping up and representing and showing that they can be great role models for uh, for their for their for their sons? And I'll just also touch a little bit on the on the on this issue of girl empowerment, women and and boy empowerment, and so forth. I think the challenge always comes up whenever we are talking about the empowerment of the boy. Somehow the empowerment of the girl fits in there, and this is why we end up finding find, finding that the girls end up we, when it, when women empowerment is somehow attached to uh, the empowerment of young men, as if it is because of women empowerment that uh, young men's empowerment is not taking place that's when you find that women start standing up and saying this has got nothing to do with women empowerment mm -hmm. so women empowerment issues are addressing the issues that are happening with women and so we need to we, whenever we start talking about there are so many resources that are being given channeled towards women empowerment there's a reason for that right there's no they it doesn't whenever we should actually be happy that resources are being channeled and it's important for men to say, yes, let there be more resources for women. Actually, men are not supposed to have a problem with that. They're supposed to 100% stand behind women empowerment. Those are the kind of men we're looking for. We're looking for men that will support the empowerment of women without feeling threatened by it. And, not, and by not seeing anything, not seeing how it's going to affect young men's empowerment. In fact, they must see how it's going to benefit young men's empowerment. So I think the challenge is we, we, we see the women empowerment as something negative, yet it's something positive. And so we, we actually want men to be excited about women empowerment. We want them to celebrate women empowerment because when men are able to be role models and stand up and say, yes, women need to be empowered, then they are sit they're showing to themselves to be great men. They're showing themselves to be great leaders. And, and at the same time, we should also say that, okay, as how can we um through women empowerment at the same time uh, make sure that through men's empowerment we are making women empowerment possible so it should be seen as a, a, a link as two things that are working together as opposed to two things working against each other because these are not two things working against each other the empowerment of women benefits men and the empowerment of men benefits women there's no competition so we shouldn't be complaining. Why are more resources being put towards women? Why are no more resources being put towards men? These are two separate issues, but the, if they happen together, they are powerful. Mm. Society can be transformed. So we want men to celebrate women empowerment, not to see it as why is why are there more resources being put towards these people? So that's where I think we need to look into. I, I, I'm chuckling because the opening air, Joe and Tino, do you want to come in, Hansi? And also, you know, here's another question. Uh, it's a challenge to men. Are men forming enough organizations to empower and protect the boy child? Or are men simply waiting for women to come up and do all the work for them? Oh, all right. No, no. Um, <laughs> before I get into, <laughs> before I get into to, to that question, I think um, uh, just to, to speak into what Tadzi was saying, uh, look, I think we... We are excited for when it comes to, to women empowerment, but I think um, one thing that uh, we, we simply want to highlight also is that, look, uh, sometimes we digress a lot from the actual issues that are affecting the boy child and then end up focusing on the issues affecting the girl child, which is why I think in a, a lot of the time um, it's difficult um, to actually then pinpoint the, the actual problems that the boy child faces because, look, it always ends up becoming a, a conversation around the women. But we are excited about women being empowered and all that because, like I said, historically, you guys have been marginalized more and um, it, 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 it's a conversation that still needs to be had. But likewise, the boy child specifically is a conversation that needs to be have, had, the, ch the, the challenges that they're facing, you know. And, um, look, um, for example, look, you know what? I think right now, if you look at the drug problem that's going on in the country right now, it's mostly boys who are engaged in these things. And um, you will notice that this comes from various other mental health issues that um, they, 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 are, they might be going through, and then they end up resorting to, to drugs, they end up resorting to alcoholism and things like that. So those are some of the things that we need to just pinpoint, tackle, bring it back to the mental health issue, and then try and build from there, right? Um, but I do agree, yes. Let's keep talking about women's issues, but let's focus, let's zero in on how the boy child is, is being neglected. And then to answer you um, um, on, on the question on um, organizations, I think, yes, we, we are starting to form 
um, organizations specifically to speak about what the boy child um, is going through. You know, like um, this month, you know, the focus is on November. It, it, it's about men and men's issues and all that. And um, there's a, a conversation I'm going to be involved in, which is talking about, you know, uh, well, it, it's speaking to men with beards and all that and their mustaches, but it's also speaking about men's relationships with their sons, men's relationships with their with their kids as well. So the, this is this is the start of that. But I think the, the challenge has been, especially around mental health, that men are actually trying to understand this um, this whole space um, first amongst themselves before they can actually pass the button down to the to the younger ones. So it, 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 it's risky for us to, to, to already start trying to um, help um, the younger ones in something that we haven't fully understood. But the conversations are starting, organizations are starting to grow, which is which is very important. And um, I think also it's important, we've, we've touched on, on, on family. I think it's important to also look into um, the different um, members of our families and their roles and the roles they play in, um, in, in, in impacting the boy child. You know, like uh, we spoke about how, how fathers, you know, it, it's, it's the responsibility of father and mother as well to, to look after the boy child. So the father is the first, safe space, I believe, for, for a boy child. So I think fathers really need to learn as much as possible around these issues of mental health. And um, so I think the first organization, can I call it, is, is the father. Fathers need to get together and then start discussing how they can speak to their sons, allow them to be vulnerable. But there's also the challenge in that there's, um, there's, there's a group of men who also don't believe that it's a good idea to be vulnerable as well. So there's still a lot of education, there's still a lot of information that needs to be put out there so that we as men can come together and have the same sort of, 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 of mindset, the same mind frame, so that we can speak the same language. Because it doesn't help if my son comes from um, this household where he's able to, to, to be vulnerable, where he's able to speak um, about his emotions, and then he goes out there, um, I send him maybe to a boarding school full of boys where three quarters of them, their, their dads are telling them to know you need to be hard, you need to, you should never be seen crying, things like that. So it comes from us as men having that discussion amongst ourselves to get to an understanding that this is the right path we need to take. I think uh, we've all been part of conversations around patriarchy. There's a group of men who think it's okay, and then there's another group who think it's bad. We haven't got to the point where we've all decided that patriarchy is a bad thing. So until we get to, to some of these, um, uh, to, to this understanding, then we'll be able to impart as much um, knowledge as possible. So I'd, I'd encourage um, all men, all fathers listening into this show today that they, there needs to be that education around what mental health is so that they can pass on some of, these, um, some of this knowledge to the younger ones. And even brothers, even Wana Sekuru, and I think we have a big role to play within the family. They can actually help as much as possible. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, yeah that's, that's, that's what I want to say. Okay, we've got lots of messages coming in from our listeners. You can also be part of the conversation this evening. Issues Panaya takes another look at the neglected boy child. They seems to be a lot of talk around uh, the boy child, the men being neglected um, at the uh, you know well, when we look at 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 the, their female counterparts and. This this conversation needs to change. So we're asking this evening, what is it that can be done to ensure that boys' rights are brought to the fore? We've got a few messages that have come in. Um, there is, uh, all right, this one comes from Madara Max in Norton, who says, I feel that you should include elders to help you find solutions. Um, okay, uh, I'll go to another uh, contribution. Uh, <laughs> Alright, Anzi. Another question. And this is obviously a man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Tony, your comments to, to, to some of the messages that have come in. I think that if we're going to make some headway, uh, we also need to relook really at some of the roles we may have assigned to each other, uh, you know, culturally, you know, throughout history. Um, 
and I say this carefully because I know that it's a very sensitive issue and mm -hmm. a lot of people may not agree, but um, I believe that uh, culture is dynamic and it evolves, right? And um, what what is meant to be a man 50 years ago may not necessarily be what uh, a man may look like 50 years down the line. Uh, we are a completely new generation. We are exposed to a lot more information and we have seen what works and we have seen what m does not work uh like what tino said you know we are not oblivious to the fact that you know women have been disadvantaged over uh, and we applaud uh some of the changes that we see now like you know getting seeing a lot more women empowered um i'm raising two girls uh so i am very passionate about them and i want to see them win and i'm training them for leadership which Absolutely. is something that may not have happened uh, probably mm. in 1990 mm. or 1980 or whatever mm. because of the perception that you know society had towards girls you know so i say that i i see absolutely nothing wrong with us revising the gender roles uh I mean, this is not an all blanket uh, approach to situations. Every situation is different. Uh, if your household requires you to revise your roles, Ababa, you know, I don't see anything wrong with me doing the dishes after my wife does the cooking, like one of the nights, or me doing laundry uh, on one of the nights and all of that. And I'm just using some very common examples here. But all the point, I'm saying all of this to say that uh, we may need to revise uh, some of these roles that we may have assigned to each other. This also means that I can have conversations with my little girl about sex, about mental health, about things, things that were traditionally not acceptable in quotes. Uh, I may have to do that because I, I, I'm, I'm a single father, uh, f uh, for example, and uh, I've had to have some very uncomfortable and conventional conversations about life with my kids. So there you go. Uh, I can let social media do that for me or I can do it myself. The choice is ours. Yeah, what do you say though? I think that could be a co you know a conversation for another day. How do you start that story with with your <laughs> with your teenager? With the, with, uh, well, I mean, it, everything starts with relationship, eh? Like Yeah, the, so you the, must the, date the, your the, children and understand your children yeah. so you can talk to them and communicate better. B build a relationship. Uh, which is strong enough with your kids so that you can have because everything begins with relationship mm. success is relationships mm. even your blessings from god depends on your relationship, relationship with, with him, him. so if you invest in relationship with your kids and do away with some of these uh cultural barriers that we've had uh over so many years uh and start allowing for conversation and build relationships with you know uh if you have a good relationship with your kids, it's a lot easier to influence them uh, with good ideas, with the ideas that are different, that are unconventional and all of that. So I would say start with having some very meaningful relationships because I know traditionally uh, mothers have been uh, given the role of you know influencing the kids uh, of ra not raising the kids like the fathers provide and they provide the shelter and pay for education and all of that but that's as far as it went at least in my household but then the mother would be the one to sit you down and say oh you know this is what happens when you start dating and this this and that that right so you a a as a man in 2022 you cannot afford to not have conversations like that with your kids so when you build that relationship it becomes a lot easier to influence them and also becoming a role model that your kids would want to follow you understand because you can talk until the cows come home but if they are not seeing what you are saying then it's difficult to influence them so be the role model that you want your kids to be and they do more of the what they see than what you say you know so if you become the role model uh then and do one is hung by any issue you know just be just be willing this is a powerful statement that i was taught a few years ago and it has completely changed my life just be willing to be wrong about a lot of the things you've assumed mm. 
I will, but, but, but ma'am, I can't, it can't be wrong. You know, and this is where some of the issues come. Uh, let me get back to some of the messages here. This one says, Harumbi, I think these guys are going my issues. Acho, avaruguti boys are facing more than women. Women face more challenges. Nyaya, tachino garaji shins, kwa muma basa mudzimba everywhere. But evil kuti, vanyaso taura, chaipo, chaipo. Havas kuti, tione kuti, zeshua, ma organizations acho I want. Uh, tino, I'm going to challenge you on this one. What are the issues that are facing the boy child? Maybe give us three hands. We can form organizations around this, 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 and this. All right. I think um, first things first, um, like I mentioned earlier on, there is um, the sexual abuse issue, which um, a lot of boys are also facing. And um, we need to come to a realization that a lot of the issues we then have as men come from those sort of um, issues. So so it comes, I think, sexual abuse is, is one of the first things that we really need to, to consider. And then also, I think, um, secondly, I think it's also around, um, we have to, I, I'm going to be careful and trade lightly on this one, but uh, there is the issue around uh, how what society deems as, as, as good parenting or bad parenting towards the, bad child, uh, the boy child. So a lot of kids, um, yeah, they are growing up in households where, um, you know, it's difficult. Like like now we can say, um, I think Tony said uh, that, look, he never had his dad saying, uh, telling him that um, I love you and, and things like that. I think I, I'll, I'll say to me, this is a personal thought. To me, that's bad parenting. So I think a lot of guys are, are victims of, 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 of bad parenting. I'm sorry to say, I don't mean to insult you in any way, but I think that's that's one of the things that um, boys struggle with. They don't get that sort of affection as, as, as young boys. And then um, when we're men, we start seeking affection in, in, in other things, you know, in other places that we shouldn't, you know. Um, and then also, I think um, one of the other issues we 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 face, I think I try to raise the issues around, you know, um, drug abuse, you know, alcoholism and things like that and all that, which also is, um, has, has um, it's, uh, you can say to a certain extent there's a lot of uh, violence involved in that in the sense that a lot of boys grow up around violent setups, violent settings and all that, and that also affects us at the end of the day because I've been, I've been speaking to, to, to a lot of men who have come up or come out openly now to speak about, um, uh, you know, PTSD, the PTSD that they have, the post-traumatic stress disorder that they have because of a violent sort of upbringing and all that, because it's always been deemed to be okay. So I think these are some of the, the, the main challenges that um, I found um, uh, guys have come to me and spoken about and all that. Um, but I think Tony can also assist uh, maybe in East circles. He's also spoken to, to, to different boys um, as well. Uh, thanks, you know. Um, there are more questions coming in. Um, we will um just try and get as many done as possible. We never have enough time. I'm looking at my clock and seeing that we'll fast be running out of time. Carrington Padiz it says men are in leadership positions because of competency, not because uh the person is a man. Everyone has the platform to speak, but the temperament of most men, uh, they are not comfortable to talk. Uh, but everyone has the opportunity. Okay, so what are you saying, Carrington? <laughs> Um, Tazi, I want to come to you as well. I want to direct one of these messages to you as well. Um, Ernest Flower says, the truth is men are willing to give 50% of caring, but sometimes if it's the female who feels uncomfortable uh, in how, in men helping in house chores. Um, let's unpack that aspect. Um, and there's another message here says, Anzi, Tony Fido, no go na wika sadza yere kumusha kana kuti ndeje mtu roba chete. So it brings us to that question, gender roles. Um, is it women who are more uncomfortable with letting boys um, help in traditionally female roles, the household chores, etc.? Yes, it's uh, actually women. Mothers are not comfortable with their sons. So these gender roles are not just gender roles that are being uh, enforced by fathers. They are also being enforced by mothers. They are being enforced by society, right, in general. We say society is you and me. So it's um, women can even say that you know, he fixes the car, he does this, he does that, and the girl is going to cook, is going to spend time cooking sadza, she's going to do the washing, she's going to do the ironing, etc. So you find that when we're talking about, um, you know, when we're talking about the, these expectations that are being placed on, 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 on boys, it's not just that it is 
um, coming from the fathers, but it's also coming from the mothers. So now what happens is that we, men have got um, this view, this very twisted view of their role in society. They cannot, they cannot, um, they cannot be what? vulnerable. Why do you say it's, it's it's twisted? Because for them, they're expected to. They're not. They they have this um, view of themselves that I will not. I will not uh, sweep the house. I'm I'm a man. I cannot sweep the house. I cannot cook. Sad. I cannot prepare food for my. I'm not supposed to be, um, uh, you know, uh, soft towards my children. I'm not supposed to cuddle my baby. I'm not supposed to take care of the baby. I'm not supposed to. I'm supposed to be the man. I'm supposed to be strong. If he loses his job at work, he'll say, I'm not supposed to lose my job. He might not even tell his wife because there's this expectation of him that he's supposed to be this strong person. This person who's, who's not supposed to show any, any level of weakness or softness. So any, what we call soft, softness is actually kindness. It's gentleness, which are very good qualities in a man. But then those are then criticized and said and called softness. You're being soft. You see. So, sensitive, caring, understanding. Exactly. Tony looks like he wants to <laughs> No, it, it's, I think we're all coming back to the same point. Yeah. Kuti, society. Kuti society. You know, this is not a this is not a men's problem, it's not a women's problem because uh we still come back to the same issues which mm. are uh i'll use a very quick example um I, I i i posted on my facebook the other day and i asked people not just women and i said are women ready for a man who can cry right mm -hmm. like who can cry like yeah. a guy who cries in a relationship mm. like i'm not okay i'm having a bad day and then he comes home and he cries on your shoulder. Our women, and you would be so surprised what the responses <laughs> were. The, the, the responses not, not, not came from night. came <laughs> mostly from women, and most women were not comfortable with a man who. So you see where the issue is. So so men need to evolve. Uh, uh, women need to evolve. Uh, uh, men need to. So it's it's a it's a, it's a two way thing, you know. Women can help create the environment and give permission in quotes to us to be able to evolve into what we need to become right and also men need to uh, be brave enough to be vulnerable okay those those are the two things that need to happen Eunice comes in and says men must come together and work things out so that we have a better world to live in the boy child is suffering things like mental health unemployment wars etc Utterly not because of empowerment of the girl child, but because of a fellow older men who are leading in the world. Men must stop trying to fight women, but actually must first engage amongst themselves and sort issues out. Ndivo vanesimba jinji vanoto tonga in societies. Omawe apana apa ote handi. Kanamazo peza kuita discussion ii. Murangi adire song ya Alec Macheso enonzi zuro ndi zuro. Uye muziwe kuti Murume di Mario H2. Look at my inventions. Akait kwa kubira kare. Akawandi sa acho. Varume ndova kama ita. Exactly. So men must form sit, what, ma, ma organizations to cater for boys issues. Mm -hmm. Sandu zuehere. I like that contribution. It's the, a challenge. The best win is uh, is not a competition approach. It's more of a compliment tarry approach mm -hmm. like you know we, we compliment i like what you said in the beginning yeah. to, you know we, we we don't compete with one another we complement each mm. other you know every mm. time you find competition you find problems but when you find people complimenting, complimenting each, other. each other you know uh you will find harmony and peace and joy and you find solutions to issues so i would say we do best by just complimenting one another you know um men can support women in fact, if you go on the chart of some of the top causes of mental health issues, generally speaking for women, you know, relationships rank high up there. You understand? Um, Jolo is of course. Up there. So if you deal with the source of these problems, Not you symptoms. have solved oh. half of your mental health issues, which come from men, you know, abuse, alcoholism, addiction, all kinds of things, depression, suicides, and all these things, you understand? So, um, Yes, you know, let's deal with women issues, but equally, let's also, you know, put a lot more emphasis on, you know, and resources.
I underline men's resources issues. towards men's issues. Men, release your resources not to the bars, <laughs> but to organize <laughs> yourselves to help boys and other men. Um, we first run out of time. Um, I want to end on this note and just ask all of you this question, a challenge actually. Is it not high time that we advocated for the International Day of the Boy Child? Um, the 16th of May, did you know that that date was set aside for boys? Uh, so much, uh, you know, there's Father's Day that's advocated for um, um, boys are fathers are boys first and it's important mm. that uh, a lot is done uh, for this conveyor belt so your comments quickly in closing uh, let me start with you Tino uh, over the line in closing and just reflecting on whether or not it's time for the International Day of the Boy Child to uh, to, to receive more attention and support I think I, I, I strongly agree I think um, it's high time we we, we we you know we speak about it more and uh, you know, we advertise it more and put it more out there. But I, I just want to encourage all men out there, you know, that, uh, look, we are the safe spaces we need. So let's be each other's safe space so that we can be the safe spaces that our little boys um, need as well. Uh, in closing, that's all I want to say. Well, thanks, Tino, for that. Uh, Tony. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of International Day of this, International Day of oh, really? that, and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Do you know why? Why? Because it means, you know, we get to fold our hands and then Canada Trust comes to you and Upatu Tanga noise. I think these things must just become a lifestyle. I mean, while it's important to have an International Day of this and International Day of that and blah, blah, blah. But I think that we, we cannot wait. We, we, we've come to a point where we cannot wait to just wait for one day in the whole entire year to highlight an issue. I think it needs to be a lifestyle. It needs to be something that we all do every single day. I like the sound of that. Chadzi, in closing, your comments. I 100% agree with that. I think international days play a big part in raising awareness. I know that it's just one day, but it's that one day makes a huge impact, right? And so I think international days were put in, in place because it's a way of bringing the world to pay attention to an issue that matters. Because every day, everybody's got their own business that they're focusing on. So I 100% advocate and believe in the empowerment of the boy child. I 100% believe in it. Because as Tony said, when young boys are, are, are empowered, women also benefit out of that tremendously. So I see the benefit of it. And so I would 100% say that more resources more support needs to be put into how we can be advocating more for the boy child. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> and what's wrong with one day? Come on, we have birthday one, Nine. one, and that's such a special day. I think we can. Mura uti tanga ingichi michi romu vana bafu. Okay, I'll end there. I'll end there. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. I think what comes out is that, Anzi, society is made up of you and I, and it's about what we are informing and feeding, and I think we can come together in harmony to create a functional society that protects boys and girls. Do join us again next week for another episode of Issues Paninyaya. Allow me to thank my guests, uh, Tino Tenda Gwatima, who was joining us over the line. Tino, thanks so much. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Fantastic. Also in the studio, I was joined by Tony Fider and Tazi Mazima. Tony, Tazi, thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Good night. And of course, we'll be back with another episode of Issues Pananya next week. Same time. Good night.